In the last video, we looked at the linear rotation mode. In this video, we're going to look at the linear vectoring mode. So we have the quadratic algorithm here. Now the difference between the vectoring mode and the rotation mode is the fact that you make a comparison with the distance y as opposed to the angle theta. Now the initialization is x0, y0 and z0 are x, y and z. Again, we'll see these in the simulation just in a minute. The output xn is going to be x0. The output yn is going to be y0. And the output zn is the one we're interested in. It's going to be z0 plus y0 upon x0. So in effect, what we've done here is we've generated a division. Now, if we wanted just purely the division, we could always subtract off the value for z0, and we would just simply be left with y0 upon x0. So the linear rotation mode produces a multiplication, and the linear vectoring mode produces a division. So we start off with the unit circle, and we're going to pick an angle that we're working with, so the angle that we're going to pick again is going to be our 30 degrees. So this is the vector sitting at 30 degrees. And again, you can see the point 0 0.866, 0 0.5. Now, the initialization is x0, y0, and z0 are x, y, and z. So x0 is just the value here, 0 0.866. The y0 is just the value, 0 0.5. So let's go ahead and we'll put those in. So you can see we start off with this vector here in pink. And the value for our Z0 is the angle here, which again is our 30 degrees. Now let's talk through the first couple of steps. The value for our x1 is going to be x0, and this term here will be 0. So again, the value for our x just remains at that value x0, which is 0 0.866. It never changes. The value for our y1 is going to be the value for our y0. So our y0 again is 0 0.5, plus the value for our x0, which is 0 0.866. And we're going to multiply it by this term d0. Now again, we've seen here that d0 is given by these here. So if the value for our y in is less than 0, then our d is a value of plus 1. If it's greater, it's a value of minus 1. So you can see here that the value for our height here, which is our initial height is a positive height, therefore the value for our d must be minus 1. So that means this is going to be minus 1 times 2 to the power of minus 0, which is a value of 1. So whenever we multiply that out, we get the value 0 0.366. So that's equivalent to taking the vector here and rotating it by minus 45 degrees. And you can see here we get the point 0 0.866, minus 0 0.366. So that's the first rotation of the vector in pink here. But of course, we actually have to find the value for our angle Z. So we're going to have to rotate this vector. And of course, we rotate this vector by a different set of angles than we rotate this vector. So the value for our Z1 is the value Z0. So Z0 is 30 degrees minus the value of D0. Well, we said our D0 is minus 1 times 2 to the minus 0. So 2 to the minus 0 is just a value of 1. So again, we have to be careful here because we've got our 30 degrees here. But this isn't actually in degrees, this is in radians. So we have to change this value into radians by multiplying it by our 180 
and dividing by pi. So we're just going to be left with our 30 degrees plus a value here which is just one radian. Now one radian in degrees is 57.29578 degrees. So we can add our 30 and our 57 degrees. So we'll do that now. So we're going to be adding on 57.29578 and you can see that this here heads up to this angle up here which is going to be an angle of 87.29 degrees. So that's our first step completed. Now we'll go through one more step and then I'll show you the actual workings and the actual uh, arithmetic for it and you can pause the video and you can uh, have a look at them and copy them down if you like. So the value for our x2 is going to be the value of x1 minus 0. So again our value x1 is equal to x0. It's always equal to 0 0.866. So that's straightforward enough. The value for our y2 is going to be the value y1 plus x1 d1 2 to the minus 1. So that's going to be the value y1. So our y1 now you can see is a value minus 0.366. And we're going to be adding on x1 which is 0.866. And we're going to be multiplying it by the value of our d. Now in this instance the value here for our y is now a negative value. So it means that the value for our d is going to be a positive 1. So that's going to be positive 1 times the 2 to the minus 1, which is just a half. So whenever we work all of that out, we're going to end up with a y value of 0 0.067. So let's go ahead and you'll see that what we do is we're going to be moving this vector here in the anti-clockwise direction. So we'll move that just now. So this moves to the next point, which is 0 0.866, 0 0.067. Now we're going to have to work out the value for our Z2, which is going to be Z1, which from the previous step is going to be 87.29 degrees. And we're going to be subtracting off the value of our D. Now we know our D is a value of plus 1 and it's going to be times 2 to the minus 1 which is a half. So we're going to have our angle here of 87.29 degrees and we're going to be subtracting off a value of a half. But remember that's a half of one radian. So it's going to be half over 57 degrees. So I'll go and I'll subtract that off just now. So we're going to be subtracting off a value of 28.64789. So that's going to give us a value of 58 degrees. So we continue doing this for the another um, seven iterations. And as we work through those iterations, this value here for our pink line here will tend towards zero. So that is our yn, apologies here, this yn should equal zero. So there's a typo here. It should say yn equals zero. Now what we're interested in is the zn. And that's the final angle of this blue line here. So the final angle in radians should end up a value of 1.1006. And you can see here that if we had Zn and we say Zn is equal to Z0, well Z0 is the initial angle of 30 degrees 
30 degrees in radians is 30 times pi upon 180, which is 0.5236. So the final value Zn should be 0.5236 plus the value over y0 upon x0, where y0 was 0.5 and our x0 was 0.866. So we should end up with this figure 1.106. So I've worked through the nine iterations and the final vector here, which is this one, you can see that the y value is 0.00292. So the y value for that vector is tending to zero. And if we were to look at the actual values here for the Zn, you'll find that the value that we're going to get is Zn is equal to 62.9003 degrees. So in effect, that is this angle here from the blue line to the x-axis. Now, whenever we convert that from degrees into radians, we multiply by pi, divide by 180, and we get the answer 1.09781. So you can see that this has worked. The value here is very close to the 1.1006. Now I'm not going to work through the error bounds in this at the moment. We can go through that in a different video. So I have the first couple of steps which we've seen in this video worked out in detail. I won't talk my way through them. If you like, you can pause this video and you can have a look at those values yourself. And if you'd like, you can try working out the next couple of values. So in summary, you can use the linear quartic algorithm in vectoring mode in order to divide two numbers. And the two numbers in this example here are the numbers 0.5 and 0.866. Of course, you can divide any two numbers just by ensuring you scale the numbers back on to the unit circle. And also note the typo here, yn doesn't equal y0, yn actually equals the value of 0. So in effect, it tends towards the value 0. So that's us looked at both the types of linear quartic algorithms. Now we're going to head on and look at the hyperbolic functions and how we're going to generate those using the quartic algorithm. Remember that all of the simulations are in the resources section, so feel free to open them up and have a play with them. And if you get stuck, then just get in contact. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.